Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'm going to walk through the differences between process export and versions. Um, over the last six months, we've had different capabilities come out and certify around change management. Uh, we introduced the concept of comparing processes and merging processes and then process export. And the latest one to complete this epic is versioning. So process export basically exports a process, multiple selected processes, or a folder of processes. And what it does is takes all the dependencies. So if a process calls a second sub process, there's layouts, record sets, variables, application versions, and the objects and actions. We'll take them, do a full deep copy of that, and then place it into a zip file in JSON format and provide a manifest of what's happened. That can then be used to move to a new project or a new, new um, or an existing project, maybe in a sandbox. Process version has just come out in Certify 11, which does something a little different. It actually creates a copy of the process steps. So it doesn't do a deep copy, it just looks at a process and those steps, creates a, a, a copy of it, if you will, and then keeps it in the Certify database. So you can then, from the window, um, of the properties of a process, see how many versions there are, you can compare the versions, um, existing ones, um, you can see and just, um, delete the versions, maybe you want to restore an e earlier version because you weren't happy with your edits. Um, and the other thing is when you delete a process, this is a, a version is kept automatically so that you can undelete a process, which has been um, a request from quite a few people. So let's walk over to certify. Now, I have a process here, and it has multiple steps in it, okay? So if I um, look, there's a new folder tab called versions. I can see there's some previous versions of this process. Um, if I do a right click on it, I can say create version. I'll call it demo one, okay? So it exists there. Now if I edit this process, and maybe I do something catastrophic and I delete a whole bunch of sub processes and click Save. Now let's see what the differences are. So I can come here to the snapshot I created earlier. I can say compare version to current. And what it will do is it will take the information stored here and then look at the steps of the process and compare them. So I can see in the current version there's missing subprocesses that actually existed over here. Okay? So I can see these three subprocesses existed, these three these four processes exist, but they're in a different subfolder. So it allows me to um, see the different um, differences. So this could be helpful, say I make a, a take a version of it and source control, some people call it a snapshot. I make my edits and then I have someone, let's review my changes before they go in production. So you can see this, the changes inside of there. Okay. The other thing is maybe I actually do need all those steps. So I can come back and I can say, please restore this process. And what will happen is we will go through and restore all those steps. So my um, process is basically brought back to its previous state. So we'll open it up and I can look, all my steps are available again. So kind of nice and handy to, um, to see versions. Now the neatest thing is, um, if you're not thinking about using versioning, you may need this someday. I'll just come over here, I'm going to delete this process. Now I know this is the higher level process, so there's sub processes that depend upon it, so I could easily delete it. If I come to my tools and I look at change history, um, I can see that um, a process version was completed because I deleted this process and I can actually go through and I can restore the process. So what this means is when I change processes, um, it gets there. When I delete a process, it will create a version of it for me automatically. So this versioning happened automatically for me and I'll say restore. It'll, take, it'll ask me where to restore it, so you can put it in a different location if you need to. In my case, I'll just put it in the same spot. And if I come back, I'll see that the process exists. So very helpful um, 
for actually just kind of managing individual processes. There it is. My process is back. And if I come back here, I'll just click the refresh. And there it is. So this is specific to the new versioning, right? Um, so what I did with the versioning is I saw a process, I edited it, I removed steps, um, I then restored them back. Now the trick is a version looks at the steps as, their, as the process itself. So it, the fact that I have an execute uh, process step or call a sub process, that doesn't matter. It's just basically treating all the steps of the process as steps. Now, if I do a process export, this is where we pull the full thing. So I'll just call this demo A, and I'll save it. And what we'll see is it starts traversing the process. It looks for the sub-processes, and then it's actually going to reconcile all the record sets that the sub-processes have. So instead of showing all, I'll say show selected. So what I can see is this order to cache had a record set. This create sales orders had a bike paint. Um, these are the record sets that are loaded. If there's optional ones that I maybe um, dynamically pick by variables, I can go and include those. Okay, And I'll complete this. So what it's doing is actually looking at everything it takes to run this process. Um, some people call that a deep copy. Um, here's my zip file. Now when I open it up, I can see my .json, so I can see there's application versions, there's attributes, there's um, layouts, there's record sets, there's processes. If I go to this manifest, it'll tell me what actually happened on the date for this version of Certify in 1906 with my SQL Server. That one process called had 22 other processes called. It had two layouts, 24 variables, and 68 map objects. So what this means is I could very easily um, take this and now put it into a fresh project, or maybe I want to copy it down into the sandbox and create new versions of all these sub-processes, edit them, and then use the merge back up to move it to my goal copy area, or I could um, copy it to another project, edit, import back, and then use my merge. So kind of the core differences are our process import and export is a great way to move processes between locations. It does a deep copy of all the dependencies. Um, and versioning is more of I'm just looking at my highest level. So if I have a simple process with some steps, when I create a version, it would allow me to say um, keep this as the initial data or this is the data after variables. And if I ever need to go back to this initial version, I can. Thank you very much, and have a great day.